If you've been looking at all of these new M1 MacBooks that have been released and wondering which one you should be getting, particularly with the MacBook Air range, and perhaps wondering if just the base spec MacBook Air would do you, or do you perhaps need to move up to the next level and get that higher spec M1 MacBook Air, which is like the extra GPU and memory and storage? Well, I have both of them right here. So we're gonna help you spend your money wisely and show you which one is the best for you. First up, hi, my name is Pete Matheson, and on this channel, you can find videos around tech, business, and a bit of finance. So if you fancy more videos like this one, then please subscribing for more. So you've seen all the rumors doing the rounds online that the new M1 Apple Silicon Max are absolutely killing it when you compare them to the likes of like the last generation machines and Intel processors. Perhaps you've settled on getting the MacBook Air like I did because the performance differences between all of the M1 range are so very, very small, but you're still not sure whether you should get the basic spec or the next step up. Well, I now own the base spec and the top spec M1 MacBook Air right here. And I also do have the top spec M1 Mac Mini sat behind me. And there are a couple of videos which I'll link to you know, above and below other videos which where I've compared these and benchmarks them to the likes of the, you know, the i9 16 inch MacBook Pro and then the Intel i5 Mac Mini. Also, if you stick around until the end, I'll tell you some of the best features I absolutely love about the M1 MacBook Air and reasons why I think you should be getting this as your next Mac. Let us know in the comments which one you'll be rooting for. And with that said, let's dig into the testing. So in the red corner, we have the base spec MacBook Air packing the brand new Apple Silicon M1 processor, 256 Six gig of storage, eight gig of memory, and of course, it's typical, small, light, and completely fanless design. This model, this middle, this middle comes in at. This model comes in at $999, pounds, whatever it is. In the blue corner, we have the upgraded spec M1 MacBook Air with one extra GPU core, 512 gig SSD, and 16 gig of memory. This one comes in at 1449. So an extra 450 well, pounds for us Brits here. I'm going to run through some various benchmark tests and then some real world tests. And then at the end, I'm gonna wrap up the results and figure out which one you should be going for. First up is Cinebench, which is a tool that will max out the CPU on both of these systems. And running it on both of these gives us an overall score of 64 79 on the base spec and then 7219 on the upgraded spec which is a fairly big difference right there over to gfx metal to test out the game performance and the results here are 70 fps on the base spec m1 macbook air and 81 on the upgraded spec so that literally that one extra gpu core does seem to give you around about 11 fps on the base spec not too shabby with Geekbench, the story is quite different. We have 1726 versus 1739 for the single core, and then 7568 versus 7626 for multi core, which is pretty much spot on given that this is the same CPU in both the models. Over to the GPU tests, and in Geekbench, we scored 17,040 on the base spec and 18,821 on the higher spec model, which is still a far comparison to the 27,500 that we saw in the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but that did have a dedicated graphics chip. And again, whilst all these graphic tests are nice, it's good to get some real world use cases. So we're running a speedometer to see how snappy general web browsing was on each of these tests. The base M1 Air scored 226 with the upgraded model, weirdly scoring 216. I don't know if something funny was going on with my internet that day, or um, but I've, I've run them and it does happen every single time. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Over in terms of video editing, we first run the Bruce X benchmark for a fairly like complex 5K sequence and then tested the export speeds. The base spec M1 Air did this in 21 seconds, whereas the higher spec M1 Air exported in just 11 seconds, half the time of the base spec MacBook Air. So that's just wow. I then tried exporting one of my usual YouTube videos, ones with like this, with various effects, transitions, color grades, and you know, much like the one you're watching right now. And this gave us nine minutes 30 for the base spec MacBook Air, and then seven minutes 50 for the higher spec model. The last test that I ran for this around like video editing was to grab some footage from my A7S 3 camera, which I'm using right now, which is like notoriously for not editing smoothly on Intel chipsets, but works very, very well on these M1 Max. The footage was all shot in XAVC-S at 4K, 10-bit, 422, and only 25 FPS. And stupidly, I didn't know down the times that they ran in, but instead, I'm gonna look at the footage and say that the base spec did it in this, and the higher spec did it in this. Isn't that incredible? I just never would have thought that would have happened. Just unbelievable. What I will say around this though is that on the upgraded spec air, the footage was more like butter, like super smooth playback with no real like skips or jumps. It, it just worked. Whereas on the base spec air, it definitely just didn't perform as well. That's all the video stuff. On to one final test to wrap this whole thing up, and that is audio editing, and specifically using Logic Pro, of which it's been quite a few years since I last used it, you know, dug in to play my drums and stuff, but, but someone in the comments on my last video about the 16-inch MacBook Pro, uh, up and below, and asked if I could run this comparison, and unfortunately I don't have my 16-inch MacBook Pro anymore because I sold it, because it was slow compared to both of these. But that person did send me a demo file, which I opened up in Logic, and just to see how it got with general playback, and, and basically that file was absolutely fine on both the base spec and the higher MacBook spec. 
But to be honest, that track didn't seem half as complicated as those I've used previously in my years of like band stuff. So I looked for a Logic Pro benchmark test and found a forum post on logicprohelp.com with a test that loops over 100 tracks. First, we had to go into the settings to make sure it was using all of the CPU calls available to it and then also increase the buffer size. Then we ran these tests. And on both the base spec MacBook Air and the higher spec MacBook Air with like the 16 gig of memory and the extra GPU calls, we managed a total of 100 tracks comfortably without them crashing. But if you see right here, we managed to get it over 100, right up to 107 before it crashed the playback. So that is really, really interesting. So in summary, and before we get to talking about my favorite things about the M1 Air, the base spec is basically gonna be fine for most people. And when I say most people, I mean those that wanna like web browse, study and do homework, college and uni work, some light video editing, watching Netflix, you know, all that kind of normal stuff. The reasons you want to upgrade to the higher spec model, in my opinion, is that if you're working on these like notoriously difficult file formats for say like the Sony A7S III footage, where the extra memory and like extra GPU calls will be noticeable when doing some in-depth video editing. And also when you're really like pushing limits in terms of having applications open all at the same time, kind of like I do, you know, like 25 browser tabs, calendar, email client, messaging, WhatsApp, Slack, tasks, note-taking, just, I mean, that's heading into like the higher spec MacBook Air territory. The base spec will cope, but it will handle it much better on the higher spec. So my recommendation, go for the base spec. Unless you have a really, really good reason to upgrade to the extra graphics core, then you can just add some storage or extra memory as you need. And again, personal opinion, but I would always upgrade the memory if you can afford to, because with these models, it's not something you can upgrade later on. So you kind of want to get that right now and it'll be more valuable in a few years time if you then want to go sell it on. Oh, it's getting hot. With that said, let's move on to the reasons why you should be considering this MacBook Air, either of them, over the MacBook Pro or any, and I mean any of the Intel Mac versions. Number one is the fan noise. After using the MacBook Pro for like the last decade, it is an absolute dream to use this thing, to use something that makes zero noise. This thing doesn't even have an internal fan, so it is physically impossible for it to get noisy. You know, I lost count of the number of times that I'd be doing something on my MacBook Pro, and not even anything that taxing, like, a video call. Apparently a video call is taxing enough to make the fans ramp up to maximum speed so that you're then having to fight over the noise of the fans when on a phone call. For live streaming or you know video platforms onto like, like YouTube and things, it was just impossible. And I have heard good things about the M1 MacBook Pro in terms of fan noise, but I just like knowing that this thing is physically impossible for this to have any fan noise because there is no fan. Number two is the power consumption. This thing is incredibly efficient. It's nearly double the battery life of an iPad Air, which is again, a good reason to buy this over an iPad if you are traveling, because you get so much more out of this. But even when using around the home, I know when I pick up my Mac to use it, chances are it will have plenty of battery life left in it to do what, just what I need it to do. Number three is the size. Yes, having a 16 inch MacBook Pro is great with a bigger screen and all, but this thing is incredibly light, incredibly portable, and the weight difference between this and the M1 Pro or the 16 inch Pro is definitely significant enough to notice. Number four, no touch bar. Love it or hate it. I've had the touch bar on my 16 inch Pro for a few years now, and it is really refreshing to go back to a machine that has actual buttons and like, you know, to change the volume and the screen brightness and, and all the other bits. I just, I don't miss the touch bar at all. And lastly, number five is price. For the amount of processing power, for the speed, this thing is so cheap when you compare it to the similar performance that you'll get from spending like thousands of pounds more on something like a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you're debating on whether you should get one, in my opinion, you should. All of us hope the MacBook Air would one day become powerful, affordable machines, not their previous generations, which, I mean, come on. Everyone knew that you were paying a fairly high ticket price for a pretty low spec laptop, just because it was like so light and so thin, but now you're paying a good price for a really, really, really good machine. Please do subscribe to the channel for more videos. Click join to become a member just because. Give the video a thumbs up if you did. Hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are posted. Or if you didn't, let me know how I can make you feel better by leaving a comment down below. With that said, if you did like this video, then why not check out this one where I did a full comparison of my 4,000 pound 16 inch MacBook Pro, or this one which talks about the best online cloud storage provider for 2021. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see your pretty faces in the next video. Bye-bye.